All right, anybody else need a picture of this before I erase it? No, I will. Okay. Well, I'm which one do you want to tackle next? The third or the fifth? Three. Three. The tool at A is used to hold a lawnmower blade stationary while the nut is being loosened with a wrench. You know why I included this one? Because I don't have one of those tools. And I've got a three-bladed lawnmower. It cuts 72 inch width, which I love on my little acre and a half because I can get my lawn done in a reasonable amount of time. But the pain is getting my blades off every season. So I discovered something that I absolutely love and wanted to tell you about it. It's called an impact wrench. Anybody ever use an impact <laughs> yes. wrench? Oh, I love impact wrenches. <coughs> Before I would struggle because there was actually a nut at the top and at the bottom. Of course, the nut at the top would come off and the blade wouldn't come off. I borrowed my neighbor's impact wrench. It was gone. It was out. And I said, I've got to have one of these things. This is, this is an angel's tool. Anyway. So I, I don't want one of these blade holding tools anymore. I've, I've got an impact wrench and I'm quite happy with it. All right, the tool today is used to hold a lawnmower blade stationary while the nut is being loosened with a wrench. Um, if a force, oh, by the way, the impact tool also keeps you from blooding up your wrist, your knuckles, which is nice. If a force of 50 newtons is applied to the wrench at B in the direction shown, determine the moment it creates about the nut at C. What is the magnitude of force F at A so that it creates the opposite moment? So be careful about this. We're actually two questions, not just one. So how should we solve this question? What do you suggest? Free body diagram. Free body diagram. I agree. That's a great place to start. The free body diagram is fairly straightforward on this one. This pin writes. You already did that when you were solving the five. Yeah. There's my free body diagram, at least the, the uh, not the free body diagram completely, but the free body. There's the free body I'm going to take. So when you look at this, what does your intuition kick and scream about? Should be something your intuition is saying, yeah, wait a second. It's a right angle. The, the blade and the wrench, which is what I'm indicating here, right? The blade yeah. and the wrench are not a body that are welded together. You imagine you're trying to mow with a mower like that with the wrench slinging around off balance? So you might say, I don't like this free body because those two are separate bodies. Yep, but they're not moving relative to one another, are they? So we can take this free body without any trouble at all and apply load B here. Because it's and load F. And notice even the tool can be part of it. You see? Right, because this is statics and there's no relative motion between the two. Even in dynamics, as long as there's no relative motion between the two, this is fine. This is a, a rigid body, so to speak. What do you mean by relative motion? This is not staying still while well, this turns. Gotcha. Right. Okay, in other words, it's a rigid body. Let me extend this just a little bit to draw the uh, triangle that I gave you. There we go. And of course, we've got an angle over here of 60 degrees. So what do you think I'm going to be able to find with this free body diagram? Because look, it says, determine the moment it creates what? The wrench. Determine the moment the wrench creates about the nut at C. What is the magnitude of the force F? What, am, what will I find with this free body diagram? Yeah, I use the components. I'll find out. Yeah. I won't find the moment of this force about C because I'm not taking the wrench as a free body. That moment is internal to this. So I've kind of skipped ahead and I'm solving for force F, and that's okay, that's one of the yeah. questions. But I will need a different free body diagram in order to solve for the moment of this force about C. Or I could just say, they asked me for the moment of B about C, I can calculate that and don't really absolutely have to have a free yeah, body right. diagram for it. And that's okay, either way, as long as you understand what you're doing, it's fine. So, how shall we proceed from here? Get the coordinates of you know, get the perpendicular components. We could get perpendicular components. That's a good idea, so let's do that. Uh, let's see. I don't know why I made dotted lines for those and not for that, but anyway. Okay. How shall we set up a coordinate system? Now I think we ought to rotate it. Could you put the vertical component of BC on the other side? Just it would help visualize it. Better. Sure. 
I prefer to not do that because I don't know. I I like to think about it the other way. There's a reason I can't think of what it is. I've seen it in the past. I can't remember what it is, but we can do it. So you want to see it as a right triangle, which is yeah. fine. that's fine. Oh, I know what it is because it makes it look like this component of B is applied way out here when it's really applied right there. That's the reason that I don't like doing that. That's why I always break it up this way instead. But whatever helps you, we can do it. Okay? Either way is okay. Be careful when you sum moments, though, because this component of the force is actually acting over here, not back here. Yeah. Okay? So what should we do next? Sum the force and the moments. Well, maybe I should write down the V sine 60 degrees, V cosine 60 degrees. What am I doing right now? What did I tell you about earlier? Shooting fish in the barrel, right? This is the easy stuff. Why not? Why not do it? This is the 5 thirteenths F side. This is the 12 thirteenths F side. And now, when I go to some moments about C, taking counterclockwise as positive, which is the best point to take, right? When I do that, um, now I've already got the X and Y components. By the way, there's actually a couple of forces missing. Do you see them? The reactions of C. You got it. Isn't there also a CY and a CX? And that's the reason for summing moments about point C. And you might say, wait a second. I thought they said calculate the moment of B about C. Yeah, they did, but it doesn't matter right now. We're summing moments about C so we can find out, not so that we can find the moment of B about C. Of course, a piece of this will be the moment of B about C. All right, so help me out here. Let's take the moment of B about C. What do we get? It's a negative. It's a negative thing, right? Because it's only the Y component of B that causes a moment about C. The horizontal component passes directly through C. So it's going to be negative. We can just go ahead and write in the piece that we have, right, the Y component of B. And now we need the X moment arm. What is the X moment arm? 3 meters. I prefer 0 0.3 meters. Whenever I see 300 millimeters, I convert to meters. It's just a habit, probably not terribly important here in statics, but get used to working with either one, okay? You could put in 300 millimeters there and you'd be just fine, no problem. Just be consistent, okay? What else? Positive. Uh, okay, so you're saying let's put in this piece next? Okay, I agree. So plus 12 thirteenths F. Looks like a B. There we go. What's its moment on? Four, four meters. Anything else? Equals zero. Equals zero. Equal zero, that's right. Again, I like this component over here because I was literally looking at this just a moment ago thinking, wait a second, there's a moment of that force about C because it's offset. You see? So that's why I like putting it over here. But I looked and realized, oh, that can't be the moment. Or, oh, yeah, this is over here. Yeah. But that's why I paused for just a moment. Okay. But that's it. You're right. So now what we can do is since we know the magnitude of the force at B, we can solve for F. Okay. Anyone get this far and have the number? Okay. 35. 35.1. For you to be different, you need your decimal place to be point. Yeah. What's that? Since you use meters, it'd be point three five. Oh no, 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 no it's, it'd be the same. Yeah, uh, that won't make any difference. We should get the same result. It will for the moment. If you put though. millimeters in it here. Yeah. Then you'll get the same thing that you're right for the, for the moment arm. Notice that the moment will have newtons times meters or newtons times millimeters. So there you're right, it'll make a difference. By the way, we already know the moment of B about C, don't we? Mm -hmm. It's this piece. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's it. So if we calculate that magnitude, we're done with the problem. 13 newton meters. 13 newton meters? Okay. Thank you. Or negative 13 millimeters. Uh, Negative 13 newton meters, either one. Okay. Yeah, negative. Any questions so far? Wait, so, yeah. you, so you just said that the negative B part, the, thir the 13 newton meters, that's the actual answer. How come we would have to keep, 
How come we can't just go negative? negative. Are you saying you want that? Well, yeah, because you said that's part of the problem, right? Yes. That would be the answer. We, we need both. So either route is negative or positive. I don't really care. If you set up an XY coordinate system, well, like just, it, well, I would prefer a negative. I was just trying to figure out that that's part of the answer. That's the answer, too, correct? That's what I was trying right. To this is the moment of B about C. In other words, if I were to make a free body diagram like this with C here and B over here, let's move that. Then the moment of B about this point is just this piece of that okay. equation. All right, that makes sense. Yes, yeah. that's exactly what I did. Good, good. Any other questions? Sure. The force, the 35.17, mm -hmm. um, instead of doing it that way, could you also set BC equal to CA? BC equal to CA. So what you're saying is go through the reactions of C? Yeah, you could. Yeah, the only problem I think is that you have an unknown force F that has both horizontal and vertical components. Okay. And so you'd end up solving for the reactions CX and CY, and you don't really need them when you get a voice in your mind. Yeah. So you'd end up with a system of equations you'd have to okay. solve instead of those. Well, it's not that it's wrong, it's just there's more work than was necessary. <laughs> Anything else on problem three? These are great questions. Well, my question is, so why would it be that top one that would be your buoyancy and not like the whole entire uh, Because the question was, what is the moment of B about C? Right. And so that's why we would not include the moment of F about C for the first answer. Because the first question was, what is the moment of B about C? And the second question was, what's the magnitude of okay. that? Good question. Please be careful and read the questions. Um, my daughter is struggling with that right now. I was working with her last night and she showed me the presentation that her uh, teacher had put on Google Classroom, I guess it was. And uh, my daughter, it was some word, it was some document they were supposed to write. And it was an argumentative piece, something about you know why pennies should be kept or not kept. And she said, I don't know how to highlight. The teacher said to highlight words. So she was going through and randomly highlighting all these different colors, you know. Because she likes art, and she thought, oh, this will be a pretty art piece. And I read the instructions, and was like, no, use green for your introduction. Use yellow for your transition. You know, and there was very, it was color-coded. And she said, oh, I guess I should have read it. I said, yeah, yeah, maybe you should have. <laughs> All right. Question five. I guess that's the last one. Should we go through it? Yeah. Why not? Yes, we may as well. It's an easy one. It's not bad at all. It's very easy. <laughs> How do you think we're going to start? Free body diagram. Good. Free body diagram. Absolutely. If you can work the problem without a free body diagram, I'm okay with that. Some are easy enough. And here's the thing. On the test, if you work a problem without a free body diagram, and I've decided to give some points, for the free body diagram, you'll have to set up your sum of forces and sum of moments equations correctly so that I know that you understand how the forces act on the body. If you get that part wrong, then you might lose some points on the free body diagram as well. Okay? I don't know if I'm, I've so far have not given any points for free body diagrams. I haven't decided because I haven't written the test. We'll see. Sometimes it's an easy way to bump up your score is to give you a couple of points for at least drawing the free body diagram. Five hundred looks like. And uh, I think that's it. Right. So we've got a moment arm here. That moment arm is 0 0.05 meters. Or we could say 50 millimeters. You know what? I converted to meters last time. Let's just leave it as 50 millimeters this time. And then we've got a distance of 35 millimeters. And what else? 100 millimeters from here to here. And uh, let's see, 45, wait a second. You don't need that. Yeah, you're right, we don't need the 45 millimeter distance, do we? All we need is a 35. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so it sounds like you guys 
are not afraid of this problem at all. How did you proceed from here? So month is good, about one point. A, 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 A B, up here? Yes. Yeah. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Your intuition might say to some moments about the center of rotation here, but notice all that does is get rid of a known force. You're still going to have the moment of these two forces. So I like summing moments either about A or perhaps about B. Either one would be okay with me. All right. So summing moments about A, as you did, probably counterclockwise is positive. You should get zero. What are the numbers I put in here? 500 times. 500 times. 50. What? 0.05. 50. I, I stick with millimeters, so instead of 0.05, I'll, I'll stick with 50. Is that positive or negative? Positive. Good. And then? Minus. Minus. That's it. We already wrote equals zero. So that yields the force F. And I think that's all that's asked for, right? Yeah. That was an easy one. Do you know why I put this in the uh, example problems to you go through? that? No, I don't really have to feel good about it. If I, if I were to make your life easy, I wouldn't necessarily feel good about myself. If I made your life hard, I wouldn't feel bad about myself. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Guess what? We've got five more classes together. Enjoy. Uh, anyway, so um, the reason I gave this to you is because I looked at it and I thought, oh, that's an easy problem that looks very real. I know that students don't like it when we go through and what you learn seems very theoretical and not applicable to the real world. You've all dealt with things that have casters, I'm sure, you've rolled around tables, whatever, that has casters on them. And so when I saw this, I thought, you know what? Sometimes when a student sees a problem that looks real, what happens is they disengage what they've learned in their brain and they engage their intuition and try to use their intuition to solve the problem. And I really like this one because it looks so real and it's something you've experienced, you know, and yet I knew that you probably would defeat it without too much trouble because it's a pretty easy problem. And so what I'm trying to convince you to do, and the reason I put it last, is because at the very end I wanted you to think, you know what, the stuff that we're learning here can be applied to the real world. That's what I wanted you to leave this with, and that's why I put it there and why I chose it, okay? Any questions or comments? All right.